Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me virtually, we have uh, Lawrence Deloach. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Uh, we have Luke Trevisi. What's up, guys? And we have a returning guest, our boy Juice Foster in the building. Yeah, boy. Woo! <laughs> what up, uh, Virtual yeah. clap here, virtual clap for you. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Same shit, different toilet. You know. Yeah, you good? Everything all right? Everyone chilling since last time you've been on? Yeah, yeah, maintaining, maintaining. Got to, uh, hey, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a bumpy ride, but I'm chilling. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. So, yo, so when you went to McDonald's, did you tell them that uh, Cactus Jack sent you? <laughs> <laughs> did you pull up and you were like, "Yo, Jack sent me"? All right, my first, my first whole situation with this is the fact that once I, I think this is the second time we've done this as Americans. Uh, we've been presented something, and something was made so popular that's already existed. Uh, Popeye chicken sandwich. That was that was there that whole time, and then all of a sudden got popular. Yeah, Trap literally put, might I add, not so great bacon on a sandwich, <laughs> and added barbecue sauce, and everybody's like, oh, this, my brain, my brain. Wait, wait, I'm not gonna let you disrespect. It's like that. He Trap also put lettuce on that burger. Right? That's right. <laughs> that literally influences way too much. And, like, I get it. His second time, like, he's the second uh, face to do, like, a McDonald's thing since, like, Michael Jordan. But it's, like, and I get that. Uh, he's black. He's great. You know what I mean? But also, didn't we just cancel McDonald's, like, four months ago? Cause what? Because McDonald's was definitely on that Trump list of, like, supporting Trump. And then, like, then they pull the whole, then they pull this Travis Scott thing. Now it's, like, okay, so what, what does anybody stand at this point? Yeah, they they say that we're with the sicko shit. This is sicko mode, and we're all about the the, the craziest thing about this to me because we we talked about it in length last week, so we don't really need to go crazy. We should go over the merch more. But the fact that there was like mad forty year old men mad that there wasn't a toy in their in their value meal because that's really what this was. There was no special packaging. There was no toy. All it was is a name attached to a thing. It's a sale price. It's a value meal. Yeah. The amount of videos I saw of guys he's so mad that the toy that they saw in the commercial wasn't in the bag with them. A lot of collectors have problems that they don't yeah. want to admit to. But I think mm-hmm. the merch was the merch was half and half. Like, I mean, you're gonna have people who who have a good eye for like street fashion and like I guess either make money off it or cop something and flex it. But everybody else is like I'm pretty sure well when it drops, because you know we order and trap stuff doesn't come for like six years. So yeah, yeah. when I'm 37 <laughs> um and this, my shirt comes in you know what i'm saying like we're gonna have mad mcdonald's workers everywhere no one ever wanted to work for mcdonald's like, everybody wanted to be at mcdonald's <laughs> like when, I, when he dropped that cactus jack uh mask like i started seeing it around like at work and i'm like did he make that or are y'all buying that off of when fufu's husband in front of <laughs> so it's interesting so- to, oh my, i'm sorry i was gonna say it's very uh it's very interesting that uh he's able to capitalize off the merchandise uh like you guys said we did have two drops i think each each drop stayed on his uh website for i believe around 48 hours uh before you know it sold out it is made i guess to order uh there were some like like you said there were some interesting t-shirts uh there were also some i like some of the sweatshirts Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, like you said, you kind of have to pick through. It's kind of like going through a, a bargain bin that's super expensive. You just got to find the good shit in there. Um, uh, you guys, did everyone purchase something or, or what? Yeah, I got the uh, I got the apple pie hoodie. That's the that's the girlfriend hoodie. Okay. Yeah. I got the uh, tell him Jack sent him shirt, the acid wash one. It just gave me like Saved by the Bell like nineties vibes. Yeah. yeah, super 90s vibes. I was like, all right, that seems worth it because it's really minimal on the McDonald's shit, but it was like max on like just being tra- a Travis Scott piece. So I was like, all right, I'll do this. And then when it drops, we'll see. Either I'll keep it or if it has some type of value, I might come up on a few little paycheck. Who knows? Yeah, but I think I think it definitely, I think a piece like this, because of the collaboration with McDonald's and, and, and Trav, I think it definitely will be something that a lot, some of these will keep their value. And, and over time, because... You know, once again, not everyone, you know, may have purchased something in, in that 48 hours that it was available. Uh, some people didn't have the money maybe at the time or whatever, or some people may, you know, see the collab months or years later. And then you're like, fuck it. I, I want, I want to cop it like a, like a body pillow, a, a nugget body pillow. I, this is definitely the most polarizing item out of all of this. It's, it's ridiculous. Favorite one. It's not the jorts. Dog, beyond the fact that 
Uh, no one, no one that works at McDonald's would ever wear a, two golden arches outside of the building. The fact that now all these people who work there have to see their uniform on a bunch of other people <laughs> is already ridiculous enough. But a nugget body pillow, bro, these are the most disgusting looking pieces of chicken on the planet. And you want me to like cuddle up with this, yo? You want me to put my head on that? Yes, you have a bite mark with like a pink inside. Oh, oh. juice, no. For the goo? Oh, okay. no. <laughs> no. That, that'd have been real. Luke, uh, Lawrence, did you get any of the uh, merch? Yeah, I did. I, it's so funny. I, I was uh, I was doing fantasy football drafts, uh, and then and then the shit popped up on the site, and I just copped something. I don't remember which one I copped, but I think <laughs> I might have copped a Sesame T-shirt, if I'm correct, or an Apple. I don't remember which one I, I bought, but I bought one of them. You're I didn't wild. get any of this. It took a minute for shit to sell out, though, because when I went to... When we posted it in the Discord and I went on the I went on the site, everything was there. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it's all made to order. So it was like it like yeah. this is more of the stuff that he's been doing where it's like, oh, we'll keep it in a window and you order it, and then once it's that's done, that's no it. more. Yeah, I was I was uh very disinterested. I I wanted nothing to do with it. But I mean, wait, did anyone actually eat the I mail? Was... Hell no. No, right, no, I no. haven't eaten the meal. Oh, you didn't I, eat the meal, right? I, I actually, like I said, I'm more excited about trying the spicy nuggets. And I said that <laughs> you know, one day, one day next week after like a hard workout, I'm just going to like just spoil, like, you know, like spoil myself and eat that I, shit. And just... I don't think McDonald's deserves to have a spicy nugget. They don't have, they don't have the chicken caliber to do that shit. Though. Well, that, that's what I'm very intrigued about because I, I think Wendy's is the GOAT in terms of spicy nuggets. And, um, and I think, you know, going to McDonald's, I want to see, because their, their nuggets are very, like, you know, cardboardy, in, like, interesting pieces of shit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, like I said, I'm, I'm very intrigued, and, and I, I'm going to give it a shot. Did you guys see any of the videos of him pulling up to the McDonald's in a Ferrari to get his own meal? Yes, I did. I saw that. Yeah, I did not. I have not been on social media in, like, two months, just for personal reasons. But well, what back. a... What a flex to go to McDonald's to get the, the meal that, you, that your name is attached to in a Ferrari that's $6. I'd have pulled up in an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled up do in you, an Uber. Do you think Travis Scott said Cactus Jack sent him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I sent me. <laughs> Can I have my meal? Can I have my meal? And be like, sir, we don't know who you are. <laughs> I told myself to come. <laughs> I think like a, like like okay, this is obviously a fabricated percentage, but I'm pretty sure like seventy percent of the people who work for McDonald's didn't even know who Trav was. No idea, bro. I, I no 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 idea. Well, I, what I read somewhere was you know there were certain McDonald's uh, in in the country that weren't happy with you know Travis' name being attached to a meal uh, because of his music. So you know I, you know it's hard. Can you imagine being in like Iowa and you know you got to sell a, a a, a meal with a, a black man's face on like it, it's like you know it could be certain parts of this country you know it was fake groundbreaking for black people <laughs> oh. but uh yeah i think uh, do you guys, do you, guys rank the, burger. <laughs> do you think the mcdonald i mean obviously it's a it's something to keep both parties relevant to me like i mean and obviously trav is already you know he's one of the the most relevant rappers you know out there but you know, it keeps both of their names generating buzz. I think this is what Trav has been doing, especially during quarantine. It's very smart of him. And he has the right people around him. The Fortnite stuff, the McDonald's stuff, those are tapping into, you know, lanes that, you know, obviously he, you know, he may not have had. And I think he just is able to dip himself into whether it's the Kardashian lane, the McDonald's lane, the Fortnite lane. Like he's, you know, it, it's, um, I think it's a fucking smart move, man. It was smarter for McDonald's yeah. after that quarantine. It, it's literally I a win-win. It's win. also true. It's, it's definitely a win-win. It's such a win-win because they didn't add anything to the menu. They didn't do anything particular. It was just the way they pack, like you know, put it, how they what they put in the bag is really it. There you now, go. No nothing new, and he didn't work. really have to do anything. He just was like, he didn't even do the commercial, dog. They had a doll do it. Mm -hmm. No packaging. Really a big win-win. I mean, you know, pulled pulled a veil over on a couple of us because uh, some some people, like I said, were really upset. <laughs> they didn't. I can't believe Yo, they didn't get people. a toy. People wanted that packaging. Mm -hmm. They wanted the full story, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, something with Bear Brick one day. He's gonna he's gonna do a toy that's gonna fuck us all up. Yeah, he he did the toy already, the rodeo, bro. Did he? 
I didn't know you. I didn't. I didn't know he dropped the toy. Oh yeah, yeah that's that's like no, five that toy, grand on stock. That X. toy been out, bro. That toy was like I remember helping people that lived in Canada get that. I they had to ship it to my house and I had to ship it to them because they were, didn't like, do international shipping. It came out when Rodeo came out. Yeah. Hmm. Just uh, just it. I mean, talk about interesting collabs. We have this. Then we have Virgil do like actually doing that concept car with Mercedes. Did you guys take a look at that? I yeah, saw I the car. I didn't see anything else from it. I don't know any like I don't know any any like uh, specs on the car as far as like interior. So, hold on. The car itself is a concept car, so it's not it's not like a real car. Like they have one that works, but I think it's going up for auction. But this isn't like a real thing. They have like you know however many they made. It looks like a toy, and then they did that Instagram filter. This is just one of those things. that's pure buzz, seemingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. Not that uh, visually it reminds me of it, but remember when uh Homer from The Simpsons met his brother and he was like a the he owned the car dealership or whatever and they let him make his own car. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This it, like this kind of reminds me of that because a lot of this seems so unnecessary, like the way Homer built his. Yeah, it looks like the slam van from uh, San Andreas. Yeah, it just oh. looks like a toy. I mean, it's. I mean, the interior looks nuts, bro. It looks like you're about to fucking fly a helicopter with this shit. Ooh. I can't wait. I can't wait for like a year when someone's like, Virgil stole that design from yeah, right. <laughs> from some old Swedish guy. Yeah. So I can't wait for that. That'll that'll happen soon. I feel like at some point I, I read something that said he they were gonna like they're they're doing more with that car. Like they're gonna like produce more like like numbers with that. Like uh, like a, like. But they, I didn't see a price point. Cause I, a yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be an auction thing. So I don't think that I, it's a you know a, like a, a user determined price based on whoever is going to. Someone bid. in Dubai is going to be driving this, is what you're telling me. Okay. Yeah, probably, bro. Yes. This is going to go for seven figures somewhere in some weird place. Mm -hmm. Going to make a weird appearance in Fast and the Furious Thirty Three. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that'd be hard. <laughs> that'd be really hard. Well, I don't know if you heard this, but they're actually making a new Fast and Furious, and they're going to space. So. Luke, shut up. shut up right now. I'm, I'm <laughs> not making this Look, up. You're not? I'm, yo, no. I'm, I'm calling this one too. Next couple Fast and Furious, if it's not the next one, it's going to be the one after, they're going to have a fucking Gundam in it. And that's just what I'm saying. I'm saying. <laughs> or they're going to do, do a Fast and Furious Transformers crossover. I'm yeah, with it. Vin Diesel's going to ride Optimus Prime. Is that what like, you're saying? He's going to be like, it's for family. <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, what I mean, so amongst Virgil's current projects, not exclude Nike and his own off white stuff. Once he started doing these weird collabs, out of all the weird collabs you talk about, Evian, like all the other weird shit, like where do you think this sits amongst those? Is this like a good project? Like, what do you guys actually think about this? Uh, the fact that I can't be a consumer, even if I could have, like, if I could afford it, I can't be in a consumer. It's a little bit lower on the scale. I think IKEA is probably the best of the weird non, non, uh, non like streetwear label stuff. Luke, do you even have your license? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a permit. I'm allowed to drive <laughs> as long as there's an adult with me, sir. I'm 25 years of age. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I think this is more. I, I, this is like you said. There's a certain uh, audience for this one. Um, uh, Montax bracket. Yeah, it's not something <laughs> I would. You know, obviously, it's not something most people would would have or, or drive or anything like that. So, I, it, you know, it's. it's a, I feel so, like if, even if I had the money for it, I wouldn't like. I I, I, I kind of agree with you. I think it's kind of like it seems like a little waste of money, but I'd go to the show. Mm hmm. I mean, we it's don't. definitely better than the Evian. Yeah, Ikea probably takes I it. I remember the Evian. <laughs> he just wrote water on it. Genius. Evian just like, he did the quote shit. I'll spend $50 Evian, on that. Evian and, uh, this, yo. For real, Evian and fucking, whatchamacallit, taste the same, though. Uh, what's that? Fiji water? They, they yeah. both taste like fancy backwash. So, <laughs> putting water I mean, on it means nothing to me. I want to give him credit here because there's not a lot of people that can touch a car. Pause, I think. I don't know. But, like, no one really does cars. 
So for him to introduce like this kind of collaboration into our space is very interesting to me. Like, I mean, you think of another designer who's done a car. I can't think of one. And I thought about it. I even, I looked, tried. No one has done a car. Yeah. You guys, you guys already did a uh, a cast on him signing the first skater to LV. We didn't we, really we, talk we, about it. Uh, I. That, Why? See, what do you that, got? That's pro. All right. So like so, it's big simply because. I mean, obviously, we have Lucian Clark. Lucian has been doing like streetwear for talk, like streetwear modeling for years. Like even before he was on Palace, when he used to be on uh, uh, Element Skateboards, he was doing shit for like Supreme and stuff. He was like the only rider from London, so he just can't. He's his 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 based on just like, I guess his clout just started building. Him just like, and then he started like really bridging, putting like drill music into like his like uh into like his Instagram posts and stuff like that, and just started like. I don't know. He just, he just, he just got real artsy. And then him knowing like the owner of Thames, cause they both, cause once he got on Palace, um, the owner of Thames came on, uh, Blondie McCoy and they just kind of build. Lucian was doing a lot of modeling and then Virgil picked him up. And then Lucian was doing modeling for LV for like maybe two years. And, um, Virgil started like he was, Virgil initially was, I mean, Virgil, uh, Lucian was initially on Supra. Uh, they even gave him a colorway to a shoe and then super was getting funky and they ended up kind of going under and he had no sponsor he was wearing Reeboks for mad long and then he started modeling with virgil and then virgil started sending him shoes this thing was skating in thousand dollar shoes like those low top green and white like sporty joints mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Shredding joints. Them down. every every variation of that shoe the highs the, the mid the lows whatever like he was shredding them and um I was, like I said, I've been off social media for a little minute. So like, it just kind of like popped up one day. I don't know what the fuck, I've, I've been taking the shit at work. And I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And it's just Lucian getting his own shoe with Louis Vuitton. And like, no one, we don't even know, like, like, like he has a contract and everything, but we don't even know like price points, nothing. Cause it's still a Louis Vuitton shoe, but it's also a skate shoe. And it's like, it definitely gets away from the, the skate culture and like, you know, the whole yeah. like, there's not a lot of money in skateboarding, a lot of bartering, a lot of like, just like, it's a lot of homie love. And it's like, when you step into like high fashion, cause like high fashion loves dipping their toes in skateboarding. Um, it, it, I know it creates a disconnect, but I mean like just as a, as, as a black man, as a skater, just like crossing mad boundaries. Now you're doing shit with like high fashion. I think that shit is big, but also he's been skating thousand dollar shoes for the last year, two years. And now that he has a shoe, there's no way they're gonna make that uh, a, a reasonable price point for anybody trying to skate them. But I'll they say look that. like they look like uh, DC Legacies kind of up top, and then it's like a yeah, it's yeah. like a very very early 2000s skate shoe kind of look, like an amalgamation of just different brands. And it's like a very Virgil thing because you know, like like El said, you know, uh, Virgil's always taking stuff from other people, or even if he does. He's always grabbing from other people's ideas and make trying to make it his own. Mm. So it's 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 it'll be an interesting see, thing to see develop. But I, because Lucian's like one of my favorite skaters, top five, like by style, like and that's like style wise. That's like a whole other detail I'd go into and probably just whew, over your heads. But it's cool. <laughs> but bigger picture, he has that LV shoe coming out, and I I don't even know what what that's gonna entail like at all. I don't even think there's details out, but. Virgil said, you know, he 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 has a contract. You know, he's he's an official skater for LV, but no further cool. details on this. Well, show. let's talk, let's let's talk about this because you said you made a very interesting point. A lot of people, who's gonna skate? All right, this is this is the best way I can frame it. I feel like this uh, skateboarding sneakers, especially with Nike people, since since SBs have been around, and we're talking eighteen, almost eighteen, nineteen years at this point with, with Nike at least where you know people were willing to pay higher price points i mean well on the resale market you know and I, and I say i can remember selling i can remember selling skate sbs in college in 2004 for 300 400 dollars you but, know what i'm saying and that was and, when the resale market the highest point not to cut you off was like 500 bucks like well that, that's what like i'm saying thousands like it is today so that that's what i'm saying so <laughs> what i'm what i'm what i'm trying to say is like if people were willing to spend you know in 2005 people were paying 250 300 for a pair of tiffany's when you know, at a time you were paying six, the, the retail was sixty, seventy dollars, and we flash forward to to two thousand twenty, and you see off out the gate when you're talking, you know, Ben and Jerry's people paying 
fifteen, sixteen hundred. You're talking civilists, people paying twelve, thirteen hundred. You know, strange loves five, six hundred off off the rip. What civilist is? The, you don't, oh, the, you don't know. No, I'm saying, no, no, they don't. They don't. Oh, no, they, don't, they don't. They don't. I know. But what I'm but what I'm saying is, it, SVs have hit that 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 uh that that point where people are willing automatically to spend four figures on a, on a low SB. You know what I'm saying? Because nine times out of 10, a motherfucker's not even gonna skate in a pair of skateboarding shoes. So at this point, I feel like Virgil and Louis Vuitton are pretty much capitalizing, yes, off of what, what the hype is. And if they can say, well, we're gonna, we're gonna sell these for $800, you know what I'm saying? Or 900 or whatever, that's still lower than some of these, you know, fucking, what is it, Grateful Dead starting out at, you know, there's people paying three grand three, for a pair of orange Grateful Deads. Right, like keep if that they're, picture up. Let me show you something. Hold on, hold on. Let me keep if that they're, <laughs> you know, we've um, I forget what episode it was. It was it was before COVID, but sure, because we I remember we were all in the same room. Um, this to me is a uh, overall, like everything Drew said. I'm not taking away from that, but remember how we were talking about some. I think it was a Babe collab. How like yeah. when when uh stuff enters high fashion, and people who can afford high fashion start getting interested in the stuff that we get. Oh, is that the, is that the reference right there? DC legacy. Cause I, I had a contract with DC for a little bit. So I was skating with DCs. Um, flex, flex, sir. <laughs> flex. flex away. Mm-hmm. Me? Hold on. Let me get the, let me get the flashlight on it one time. You feel me? Literally the same fucking shoe. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, yeah it's identical f- for the most part. You know, no, but Juice, like, what, what I was saying was like everything that you were saying is definitely true. But part of the problem with this is is that it's it's uh, it's expanding the tax bracket. It's moving the tax bracket. The goalpost is changing for people like us who are actually do this, right? So people who like just follow these brands, they see what's cool, see what's hot or whatever. These collabs price us out. Mm-hmm. So I mean, Al, kind of what you were saying, like if this is like an eight hundred dollars shoe. Who that really skates that's worth like who actually is gonna skate in these besides the people who seats to that that's good at skating? We're gonna see that's what I'm saying. How many people skate in a pair of hundred dollar Nike? You know what I'm saying? Like that you you know, people paying thirteen hundred dollars for it, they're buying those to fucking flex. Right, so, if, you have, if you don't got no type of like shoe sponsor, like you're you gotta find somehow to, somewhere to get hooked up. That's the whole thing. You better pray cleaners likes your fucking kickflip. That's all. But that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, you know, they're, they're Virgil and Louis. They're just tapping into a market that people have already, you know, that people already see is like booming. I mean, skateboarding. You know, due to outside influences, you know, the last couple of years or a year and a half, you know, skateboarding sneakers have just boomed on on the resale market. If someone's willing to pay three thousand dollars for a pair of you know sneakers that came out in two thousand five, you know, that's fifteen years old. Then I mean. People are gonna try to floss the niches. Just so. crazy. Like I hate. I, when, oh god, god, god. I was just gonna say. I really just don't hope that like other high end brands like follow in Louis's shoes. Not you know, pun in, no pun not intended there. But uh, because if like Gucci and Prada start making like legitimate skate shoes, I mean Golden Goose in their shoes it says uh made for skateboarding or some shit like that. Yeah, but we also have shoes that say not for resale that sold for like two thousand dollars. Welcome to the world that we live in. Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna be really mad at it if other brands do it, but it's also gonna be like, remember when you when we like we would shit on the idea of a poser, like if you wore skate shoes but you didn't skate. Yeah. In high school, like you got called out for that shit. At least you know suburban Boston, we were like, yo, you're a fucking poser, dog. That was like, what happened? And like, huh? Posers took over the industry. That's the what posers won. Posers won. Oh posers no. Beat posers beat us for sure. The posers won. They yeah. evolved into the rich kids that you know the parents are like, here's five thousand dollars, get out of my face. Boom. Let me buy all these sneakers and then flip them. You know, like yo, the posers won. Posers won. I'll Damn, smoke. dude. So. I think the I think the moral here is I think uh, you know people shouldn't be so disgusted at a, a, a high end fashion uh, skateboard shoe, especially you know I, I understand that it definitely feels like like not for the culture if that's a, if people want to say that, but at the same time, 
you know, when, when people are willing to spend four figures on a hundred dollar sneaker, like, you know, this is, this is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. The milestones for sure outweigh like the, any negative thing that will come from this. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think so. It depends on you know. And once again, I mean, skate we, as we've seen in the past. I think all all like especially like Nike skateboarding sh shoes, the 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 big you know the height ones they're they're super limited. And I think you know this is a a small market, and I don't think yeah. they're gonna be. You know, I think obviously high end fashion Louis is gonna you know I don't think they're gonna have they're gonna mass produce these. So, so question though, what's up? Well, two two part question. First part is. Uh, if you had to guess the retail, what do you think they're going to be? And second, what do you think the resale is going to be? Because uh, the Dior. only reference we have is Dior with Jordan. Right. And it's a little different because it's not a basketball shoe. This is a skate shoe. It's, and it's not a collab shoe, neither. That's, that's, that's in-house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me look up the prices of Louis shoes at first because I've never I've – never, Looked at retail price for little <laughs> sneakers for being a skate for being a pop for be, it being a skate model and based on it being like streetwear in a sense. I'm pretty sure it might run. I don't know. Virgil might try and like say, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna try and make this a little more available." I feel like for that being Louis Vuitton, between five and thirteen. That's such a, that's such a why. Uh, I'm gonna save my ass. Uh, answer. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Just yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna guess. Uh, uh, three dollars to three thousand dollars. <laughs> it's gonna fall somewhere within that range. <laughs> I mean, yo, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I'm just gonna say that. No, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna guess be the one seven hundred guy. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. wait, Chris, what'd you say? I'm gonna guess seven hundred. Seven hundred, Luke. I'm gonna say nine hundred. Juice. I'll say, all right, I'll say eleven. Say eleven. I love it because, I'm, okay. No, okay, what were you going to say? Because they're going to try and push this more as, I feel like it's, I don't know, I, I feel it's, they're still going to push that high fashion aspect and the fact that it's still Louis Vuitton and they're putting their name on it and that's a, a collaborated shoe. I, I don't know. I think that, I think retail has to be at least 11. They're not going to, because think about it. He was skating in already existing, like, you know, $1,000 shoes. shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I now seven sounds reasonable because they might say, "Oh, we're gonna try and make this a little more affordable," but I don't see it going under. I don't see it going under seven, but definitely max eleven. And then for resale flip, three, three racks. Oh, it has five. to be something like that, right? Yeah. Well, 3, I mean, the low. I, I think. Well, I mean, before we can get into re resale, I mean, we you know we have to see how you know how these are available, and and I, I will say, like I said, I. I will say that I feel like they're going to be in that eight to nine hundred range only because they are low tops. Uh, if they were higher, if they were highs, I would definitely put them in that thousand dollar, eleven hundred dollar range. Um, I'm once again, I'm just basing this off of price points that I've seen with Louis in the past. Whether it was, you know, I've seen their their Damier print sneakers go for like six hundred. Uh, I've also seen, you know, I've seen Kanye's go for 1100 So, you know, it, I think it's somewhere in that range before. You, you can't go too high because you will turn off a lot of people. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think under a th I think it has to stay under $1,000. So these, these Louis Vuitton Stan Smiths we got on the screen here are going for seven ninety five. That's the mm -hmm. lowest version there. That gold one there is eight ninety five. But I, I, that's the lowest I've seen. All right, we got a seven forty. Like, yeah, these are all staying above seven for the i haven't seen anything over seven yeah you, you know I, I think you got you're gonna be they're gonna be over eight hundred dollars e easily but i think under a thousand like you see uh, okay so the ones he was skating all these yeah the all these he's was skating. yeah that's what i'm saying so you look at the trainers that they have and it's the trainers are 12. you know 1200 yeah. 11 you know 1100 blue ones are fire they're very nice I, I can't. I just can't get into designer sneakers anymore, man. I just not. They just don't do it for me anymore, man. I feel like LV took a very like old eighties like design and kind of flipped it around. Avia. It was it was Avia basketball sneaker. Oh, Avia. Wow. Avia. Old eighties Avia, which 
I don't know why Avia hasn't like tried to capitalize on all these references being pulled from them. The Avia sneakers mm-hmm. now are so garbage. They're like like a mom running like a, a second tier Skechers, like even maybe even worse than that. But everyone's pulling off maybe their old make, basketball shit. Maybe they just still make they make decent money off that shit. They they're better. They don't feel like they need to. You might be right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like the blue ones the best. They're nice. Oh no! They're, yeah, they're definitely not going on the seven. That's a, that's oh no, no! Without without a shadow of a doubt, they'll be uh, they'll be very uh, expensive and and limited too. I mean, there's no way I they're going to make these available to a lot of people. With how he moves, I feel socially, I feel like they'll probably do two drops. They'll do one on like it's not going to be a skate shop shit for sure, mm-hmm. but they'll definitely do probably like a flash site or something. Uh, you know what? I bet, I bet like one store in Chicago will get them, like one skate shop in Chicago. They'll probably sell them out of um, Don C shit. Oh yeah, that makes perfect yeah. sense. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we'll see though. But like that, I, I be, right? Yeah, bringing that up, Juice was yeah. That's just it. Thinking about it again with this discussion, I, like the fact that that shit is happening in general is just crazy. No matter what the price or resale is going to be. Yeah, man. Also. To to strike back on one little thing before we move forward. Yeah. Um, I feel like a company making like doing like sneakers apps. I think what they're trying to do, they're trying to push people to like go for gr shit more often. Like, I feel like they're trying to get because like they're gonna they're trying to capitalize on making more money at the end of the day, and I feel like it stems from making all these sneakers seem so unavailable so rare that you have to buy GR and then GR should get why are mids popping right now? Well we, yeah. we we we've talked about this on the podcast before, you know, like where sneakers will do an extremely hype drop and you'll miss out, but uh, a couple of days later there'll be yeah I remember that I remember there'll that. be something, you know, because you're like fuck I missed out but I'm still gonna either rage cop something to make me feel a little bit better. And I think that that's definitely a strategy that's been implemented, uh, you know, with, with Nike and, and, and different, you know, sneaker companies over the years, bro. They, they're not stupid. You know, they, they know. Rage cop is funny. Why is rage cop so funny? Cause I've done that, but I've never heard. That's the first time I've ever heard that term before Lawrence. <laughs> what a rage we're cop. all rage we're all cop. Guilty of it, yeah. We're all guilty of a rage cop. A- no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I remember being in the uh, Portland Nike store comparing all the the prices on StockX to the stuff I'm supposed to get half off and I was just so mad <laughs> that I bought one of these fucking son of a bitch it's all cheaper on StockX but I got to buy something I mean, just, the, I've never heard that term uh, rage cop it's very funny the, ra- the rage <laughs> cop usually comes you know after like you know there's like some release that you want whether you know on sneakers or whatever you know and you miss out and you're like and at 1006, you're like, fuck it, I'm buying something. <laughs> you just pop that shit just to make yourself feel better. It doesn't have to be a pair of sneakers, but it could be, be a sweatshirt. It could be something that makes you say, all right, well, I missed out on these, but I got this. And, and, and that's how consumerism works to me. You know, yeah. you know like I said, you know, you, you get, you have super limited shit, and then, you know, you drop the, you know, you miss out on Dior's, but you get the Zoom racers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's that's how you know they're they're not dumb. I want to talk about something too, uh, because we you know you guys speaking of like pushing the GRs and things like that. I know it's a lot of like, especially with with SBs now. I think you know everything pretty much sells out now. But what you're really seeing is people really you know obviously gravitating towards the quick, quick strikes. But there's certain uh, shops and there's two that come to my mind on the on the top of my head. There's Premier, uh, and then there's CCS. And uh, Premier does a VIP, so if you purchase, you know, enough shit, sometimes you'll get, you know, exclusive access to, you know, like kind of like, you know, not not like the limited quick strike joints, so the limited GRs, you know, like the GR yeah. stuff. So, yeah. you know, like they, a lot of these places are are pushing you to buy shit from them, like whether and it's like, you know, gar- sometimes not garbage, but like not exclusive stuff, just so you can kind of get the. Do you like this? Yeah. <laughs> just so you can get the access and the the illusion, the lore that you know that you're going to be able to get the like the semi exclusive stuff. It's 
and, you know, p- these these stores, man, they <laughs> they got great marketing teams, and they they know how to fucking get the last dollar out of everyone. Yeah, I don't understand how people don't understand. It's 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 about who you know. It's not about anything else but who you know. If you don't, that's facts. That's the thing about this culture. Like, you got to put yourself out there to to get denied, get approval. Like, you you got to get you got to go through the trenches to. to like people think it's just a matter of getting on sneakers and just like grabbing some shit. Sometimes you gotta know people to think beyond sneakers. Like it's it, it's so much to this culture that people don't understand. They think it's just about buying sneakers and looking cool, but it's like it's a whole system of respect. It's just, it's a lifestyle. Yo, who does PJ Tucker know? Everybody. Every- PJ t- PJ Tucker knows the NBA contract, and and that's what he knows. And he knows that he's got millions of dollars it's, to be yeah. able to. He's getting another player edition of like a crazy shoe. He's getting his own pro right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because I everybody knows PJ. He don't need to know anybody. Everybody knows him. You know what the running gag in the house now is when we're watching uh, basketball? Everyone's like, "Yo, Chris, what is PJ wearing?" <laughs> Chris, what is it? Tell us. I'm like, bro, I don't know. This man gets fear of God per- PEs. How am I supposed to know what the fuck he's wearing? But I mean, these these are fucking crazy. These are crazy. I'm not even saying in a good way. I don't really know how I feel about them yet. They're just fucking crazy. I think these shits are fire, and that's definitely uh, um a, that's definitely gonna be on sneakers, and I'm definitely gonna try. <clears throat> now, had we not had to deal with COVID, and life was regular, those would have dropped in my store. Damn, and that's you would have held true. a pair for all of us, right? <laughs> and lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, no, it's for my homies in the podcast. Come on. It, we have a, Yo, come oh, on, dog. Oh, it's for, for the podcast homies. Yeah, of course. No, we'll just... No, we have a Discord. Come on. Like, <laughs> they're like, oh, shit, you're right, Jesus. Here you go. Oh. Uh, all that means is now you just now you just get Europeans coming up to you and be like, you have this? You have? You but have like, shoe? But, like, three years later. <laughs> it's possible you have off-white? It's possible. <laughs> Is is t- t- possible uh, off white? You have like people come to me with pictures from Stock X, <coughs> shoes that have been out <coughs> so long ago. Margiots. Why would we have those? Why? Why, <laughs> why would but we remember this? Is that's the thing, man? People, people don't, people don't. Like, we look at it as like, yo, we know dates. We know when this dropped. We know, you know, this one came out, you know, this year. And then they retro this this time. Then they did this. Like, but the average consumer does not know that shit. They just be like, they be like, yo, like, okay, I just need these. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I like, I'm not the, I'm not on some, like, I get what you're saying, Juice. Like, it's like, come on, man, shit annoying. But, yo, I really peep that, like, motherfuckers, they don't know. They just, they just want hot shit. You know what I'm saying? So like everybody want to be noticed. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So like I remember maybe like I, can't what, handle it. I remember maybe this is like this is like 20 even in 2020. I remember maybe around 2013. I remember I I was uh this girl had a pair of Jordans on, right? And I was like, oh, I was like, are these the the 2000 and she you know, don't she know. don't know shit. <laughs> so that that's what I'm saying. So it's like, you know, like very like, nice. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? In my mind, I'm like, oh, this chick, you know, blah, blah, blah. She may know this year versus this year. Oh, I remember that retro. But at the end of the day, motherfuckers don't know shit. No. They just no. want the hot stuff. Yo, so my, my roommate's been, like, starting to date during COVID. And every time he, like, he's putting his outfit on, you know, he's like, yo, Chris, do I look good? Am I all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes like, all right, I'm going to wear my off-white uh, waffle racers. She mm-hmm. won't appreciate it. I'm like, why would you do that? He yeah. also has the hyper adapts. I'm like, he's like, yo, I'm gonna wear these. I'm like, like the first first date he had, I was like, yo, I'm gonna break out the hyper adapts. Fuck anything is you have to. Duh. Why would you? Why? Why is mm-hmm. why? no? You wear your Stan Smiths. That's it. You wear your threes. He's got three, UNC three. threes. I'm like, yo, those are your date shoe, bro. You just wear UNC threes. That's it. That's it. I could just throw on any sneaker aside from a skate shoe and be fine. Yeah. <laughs> your shit. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, man. It's one of those things, what man. What comes out of my mouth and what my dick does later. That's literally all of it. Yes. But I probably... <laughs> that's so <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, guys. It doesn't... I'm you sorry. Know, you like, had, I, I just feel bad you had an expectation, Lawrence. That's my whole thing. I'm just like... He was like, yo, are those the... And she's just like... 
but that but that's what I'm saying. So it's like <laughs> a lot of times, like, and then even like you know, like like something like it's so weird because I, sometimes I wear a pair of sneakers, and like you know, and, and the only the only people that come up to me are some like sneaker nerds. You know what I'm saying? Like Max. some dudes, like, oh shit, you got the fu- oh, I remember when I like, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's you know, and I do it too to people. Sometimes I saw a dude wearing uh, Mork and Mendy's uh, the other day, and I and and I, you know he's walking. And I'm like, oh shit, bro. I'm like, yo, fucking love Mork and Mendy's. I remember I saw a dude in Gibson's one time, Gibson mm-hmm. SBs on a train, and we just struck up a conversation. But like. He's like some if he's wearing that shit for a girl to appreciate or some random dude like nine times out of ten that shit is not gonna happen. No. And I think that's what you know. Like I said, people just come and they like I just need these Jordans, man. I, you know, motherfuckers don't know the nicknames. They I want the black and red Jordans. That's it. Uh-huh. Oh, they came out. Oh shit, I didn't even know they came out two years ago. And that's <laughs> that's how it is, man. Yo, I made the uh, I made the mistake of walking by the barbershop by my house wearing my Union Fours. And I had the whole, the whole block was like, I'm not going to say in an uproar, but all of them were like, yo, ho, sh- what, yo. But they didn't know the name or nothing. Not, they're like, yo, them's the, that, that's the, the shit. What, them, what are the, hey. They're like, hey. Tap it. which ones? Those are the ones, right? The, the, those are the ones that do the thing, right? Hey, yeah, they, that's the shit, right? Yo. <laughs> yo, those are the pussy magnet toes, right? <laughs> <laughs> the pussy those magnet. Are not, those are those yeah. yeah. First off, there's no two that's a pussy magnet. It doesn't matter which, <laughs> it, even if it's just Don's, there's no pussy twos. <laughs> no, no pussy magnets. You're not getting, you're not getting no type of head off. No, nah, only dick magnets. Lawrence bro. has done it. <laughs> I, I, I love, I, actually, I, I know we, 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 y'all shitting on twos, but underrated. <laughs> that's such an underrated sneaker and just in general. I had a little top white and blues in high school with the, uh, I remember the, Dude, I, I had the, I mean, I've had the high, you know, black and white, black and red twos. I had the mellow twos. I've had a uh, Don C twos. Mellow twos. And I, and I had the 2004, I had the 2004 fucking mellow twos. Not the, see, but that's just me and my own, you know what I mean? But it's, it's one of those things, man. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, just wear what you like, bro. Like if, if that's, you know. It's just the intent. It's like, where would you like? Just don't be a dick about it. Where, where would you like? So, would you guys wear these Beyonce uh, superstar platform shoes? You talking about the uh, Adidas Sakai's? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Adidas Sakai's. That's right. Oh shit! Dude, I hate that view. That's not. I don't know how that's going to be an appealing view. Yeah, oh, no. How do we not. feel about the yachts? I told you. Yeah, these are literally like. I thought that like feelers are like raft shoes. These are legitimate like speedboat shoes. Not a fan. These look like like exotic shoes in Destiny too. Like this is like an item. Yo, these make you move quiet. Oh, these are <laughs> like these like this is like plus thirty resilience, a hundred percent. My mobility is insane. Yeah. Yo, y'all even brought it to a place where I can't even get one. Exactly. Like, I don't know. Bro, they, they increase no. reload speed. Uh, <laughs> they have a void. They have void, void fucking. Uh, it's a void affinity, burn. Affinity. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, a void void <laughs> <laughs> it's a void change. I'm just going to say this. They look exactly like Alexander McQueen uh, low top sneakers. They look like. Uh, they yeah. look yeah. like there you go. That's it. The bottom looks very McQueeny. And uh, and that's it, man. I feel like S- S- Sakai should sue just for the fun of it. I feel like that Beyonce should not be in the meetings anymore. I thought Beyonce got to stop doing a lot of things, but that's a whole other story. For I, I just learned today that you know the the music video for EXO, uh, where she's in the Ferris wheel. There was also another lady and her and her like boyfriend in another one of those Ferris wheel like uh, boxes, and mm-hmm. they had to wait up there for thirty minutes, and she had a panic attack. So, I don't know. Just more Beyonce stuff. <laughs> all right. All right, Luke. Bring in both the Beyonce fun facts. Love that. <laughs> Love that about you, buddy. We have lost 65,000 female viewers today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think this is a miss. I don't know who's paying 200 for those. And if they do pay 200 I don't know how they're not going to get ridiculed wearing these. I mean, like, I thought yeah. the Beyonce shit when it came out would be, like, a little – a little tighter than this. Like two twelve. She, she has enough fans that will support. Like, let's just be honest. Like, oh no, I mean, I know the Beehive huge, and I'm not saying they're not selling out, but I am oh, saying Ivy that like Park just were fire. The yeah, what? Ivy Park stuff was good. Ivy Park. Yo, yes, it, yes. That big, that whole shit was crack. nice. That shit was cracked, but nah, this ain't it. This nah, is like man. crime deterrent. I could kill somebody with these shoes. Hundred <laughs> percent. If you if you hot glue them like 
at the ends of a staff, you'd have like, you feel me? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be something different. I'm, pre- I'm predicting the, the people who do buy these shoes, there's going to be a, a large amount of yes queens coming out of their mouth. Also, <laughs> also. A lot of, yeah, it's like a lot of dancers and people, you know, those are the people that, that fuck with those. Co- Koreans. Koreans. They would love to wear more shoes. More Beyonce. More, more Beyonce. We need more things to make us look uncomfortable, but we look good. Are you also Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on, brethren. When I want that with the patois, no, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Me done, done, done. Um, <laughs> Koreans and Jamaican. That's, that's her fan group, is Koreans and Jamaicans. <laughs> Jamaican Koreans. Mm-hmm. There you go. So I'm guys, uh, listen, I'm, uh, I'm excited. We got, uh, we got some dope shit coming out from Jordan Brand. Fragment threes. I don't think they're dope, but uh, I just wanted to. I was like, yo, can he really say this with a straight face? <laughs> Can't say it with a straight face. At I all. love them. Juice, I love them. I want them more than anything else. He looked real direct and her. I love the. I love, three. I love them. They, I want them. I honestly, I haven't wanted a pair of shoes more than these in a very long time. Are you, you're serious. He's yeah, dead ass, which is concerning. That's actually kind of concerning. My stomach actually kind of like hurgled a little bit. Everyone hating on me liking these. What's good? Fight me. <laughs> like, I, I can't. We're social distancing. Also, That's true. The merch was like, the merch where the also like looked like mad dad stuff. There's that, that one, I think it's like what, one hoodie that was like, we said was like kind of cool. Yeah. Or like, there was a couple pieces that seemed like kind of interesting. Everything else was kind of whack. But also, those threes are just kind of like, what? I, I'm going to go for them so I can see if I can like make profit off something with them. But other than that, I ain't seen none of the clothing. I just seen the three itself. Really? You didn't see the clothes? No, I didn't see it. I, well, I'm not interested in the clothes. I just want the sneakers. I'm going to go to, like, watch. I'm going to see some white dude in them at, like, Turtle Bay just partying his ass. Oh, off. God. It's going to be a lot of dudes. I'm like, yeah, you fucking douchebag. I got my fucking threes on. Like, I, I see it. Or I, can, I feel it. <laughs> I see it coming down. Like, What do you I'm mean gonna, no Jordans in the club? They're I'm fragments. <laughs> I'm going to get, like, a lot of off-duty cops coming into my job with them. Oh, well, I think, I think what it is, I think this is a uh, this is a, a, a hype shoe because people saw what the fragments, uh, fragment ones did, you know, in terms of, you know, what they did on the secondary market. So people see that name associated with, with a Jordan 3, and the first thing they start seeing is dollar signs. It's, it's much like the Union 4s to me and the Union 1s. Like, the Union 1s are obviously the more, the uh, more complete shoe, but once people start seeing how much they can make and you know off of the union name then the fours became more appealing a lot of people didn't like the fours at first i think this is a shoe that people are going to do the same on. Mm-hmm. they're going to see that there's money to be made and then they're going to go you know it's going to be like oh a, a cop that should be pretty easy becomes a lot more difficult because of the different variables oh you know what luke luke on the side hit me with the link for the merch i have seen this and i was uh, very unimpressed yeah, it, I feel like it was like one piece out of that merch that was okay. Nah, but the also, only good joint is like the double logo chest hit. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a yeah, fact. But also, um, I feel like uh, Hiroshi Fujiwara could have like really just did a fire red three and just did the fragment blue and maybe did the fragment bolts in the back instead of the Air Jordan or one fragment side, uh, other side Nike Air. That would have had us all shitting ourselves. I think that would have been insane because with the with the with the elephant print in there, um, I mean it's the black <laughs> elephant print, but still, and it, I, that'd have been insane. But you know, to each his own. My thing is, is that I think what Fuji does in a lot of instances is he, I'm not gonna say strips away, but he tries to highlight like the purity of whatever the object is because he's very object driven. He's not so much like switch material up, whatever. He's like the whole package, you know what I mean? So if you look at a lot of his stuff, a lot of the imprint is just bong. It's like a seal of approval. I mean, like, and we've seen it on many things. Supreme does it. A-Life does it. Like, a bunch of brands that we know and love do it. For him to get to tone, like, he stripped the whole thing down and was just like, yo, I'm just giving you the shoe. That's it. Black, white. Clean as shit to me. That's just me, though. I I get what you're saying, though. But, yeah, I'll go. I think it's a a clean shoe. It's just... uh, it's something that's like it's just plain. I mean, I know we're 
when when people get them in hand, they'll be like, wow, the quality on them is amazing. I think that's a, yeah. that's something that, you yeah. know, Hiroshi's always done or his, his collabs have been able to uh, achieve in terms of quality. But I, it's something just, just that, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, obviously, if you get them in hand, you get them in hand, you'll probably love them. But they, they just feel like they're incomplete. They feel and I don't know. to me. I think it's because the lack of texture, right? I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Like, the, the no elephant print, the no, like, like, the, like... Look at the fragment ones, and it's literally a pair of ones. Like, he literally, like, just all he did was put it, create that fragment blue, and that's what it was. Mm-hmm. I feel like these, just like, if you see somebody in them, you're just like, you know what they are. Like, I feel like they're not like, they don't see, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's literally a bread one, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. a, a, a black toe one. In fragment blue, mm-hmm. he could did a fire red three in fragment blue, and that it had. But I just feel like the the threes. If you pull up the threes, I just feel like they just look too obvious. It's like it's not a double taking shoe. That's a double taking shoe. Damn, yo, four thousand dollars for a pair of fragment. Jesus, it's crazy. I know. Thirteen, Jesus. <laughs> Man, these are just so fucking clean to me. My internet is trash right now. Here we go. Yeah, bro. That, this is what I'm saying, yo. He just giving you the object. That's it, bro. He going like, yo, this is the this is the silhouette of the brand that y'all want, like, and I got you. This is so <laughs> clean, dog. All right, just Are me. You, All right, I see. I you. know they're clean. They're clean. Nobody's arguing with you about the cleanness of them. I or, or the cleanliness of them. I I don't know if I'd wear them though. Yeah. If I it's hit, I I'll see how I feel about it. Yeah. Fragment. If I hit and and you miss, Chris, I'll I'll give them to you. That's what I'm talking about, Luke. That's what I'm talking about. Love that. That's awesome. That's right. I, I, could, I could jack that. If I hit, I'll, 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 I'll message you. Nine and, <laughs> Nine and a half. If I, if I hit on my size, I'll give them to you for trade. So you can All right, it. fair. Oh, shit. This is going to be bananas. So we got, we got uh, fragments, and then we also saw some leaked images of the, uh, the, hot, the Black Friday... Uh, Air Jordan is coming out as the Air Jordan Four Tech Red. Oh, Are yes. come out Black Friday? I believe they come out Black Friday. Tech Reds, Tech oh. Red Fours. Uh, which for those of you who are like, you know, obviously you guys are some of you know, some of you don't. Uh, Tech Red is basically another name for the Fire Red Jordan Fours mm-hmm. that are coming out. I'm actually excited about the shoe. Uh, I'm, I, you know, something about I think the the trio, the the th- There's like four Jordan Fours that I'm like like OG colorways that are amazing. Obviously the cements, white cements, the black and red, fire reds. And then I, I'm a big fan of the military blues too, which, uh, mm. and uh, so we got, you know, there, what are you guys thoughts on, on these? Are, are you looking to get a pair or, or what are you doing? I mean, uh, I'm, I guess I'm indifferent. Like, I guess like with the onslaught of fours, we just kind of have had sprinkled throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm cool. If I if someone handed me these, I'm not going to be upset. But I don't know if I'm like going to run after these. No, I mean they're they're going to be super easy to get. It's not like it's going to be you're gonna, you know it's not like it's a a fragment pair of sneakers. It's just going to be yeah. You know, it's one of those like you know. Do you want like you know? I like sometimes I like buying just the OG colorways of Jordans. Like I don't like yeah anything else. Like just the if I can wear it. I'm 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 I might not I might not buy it. I'm not going to hold you right. Cause it's Mike wearing it that gives it the it, it's 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 so much more than just the shoe. Lawrence, yeah. you were saying um before we hit record like uh the reasoning or what you think the reasoning was for the change of the name or color. Can you elaborate on that again? Well, I think I think it's just the case of Jordan Brand saying we're 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 gonna give you the retro, but we're not gonna we're gonna take something out and then you know and then we're gonna drop it again in six years and then give you what you want it in 2020 but right. we're going to take something out because that's just how gentry humphrey seems to work his magic at jordan brand as yeah. far as far as if i would cop these um you're gonna have to wait till september 30th at 10 01 a.m after the off-white noirs drop again oh, no no off white sorry sorry the off noir uh union th- uh fours mm-hmm. Yo, this, if, wait if, what's up with that so they're yeah they're re-releasing probably on on Jordan right you said on the Jordan brand website they're, they're re-releasing yeah they, well yeah they're coming out in larger quantities which won't be super large quantities but yeah they they're re-releasing 
But if, uh, if I do get those, then not getting these. Uh, if I don't get those, I might rage cop these. <laughs> you might rage cop two months later. I like that. I say it'll be a delayed rage cop, but I'll be because I'll, I'll be like, all right, I didn't get these, or right, I'll be sad for a day, and then I'll see these come up, and I'll be like, I didn't get those fours, and now I'll get those. <laughs> like, I hate bro. delay rage copping is even funnier. It's like <laughs> like six months later, you come home and like your your girl or your mom, like whoever it is, like you bought another pair of shoes, like yeah, this was a rage cop from like six months ago. I couldn't. <laughs> And let's talk about premature rage cops. <laughs> oh, you know you get the L already, so you just buy some shit now? Yeah. Oh, right. exactly. I'm going to lose anyway. That's, <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> Damn. I, <laughs> rage copping a, a restock, though, too, is oh, so funny. <laughs> right. Like, they came out. And now they're coming out again, and you missed it. So it's like. <laughs> just so much oof. It's so oh, much that's, oof. That's very funny. Um, I think we're kind of getting to the end of the line here, guys. Is there any uh, topics you want to discuss before we get out of here? Uh, real quick, Akira is dropping a theatrical 4K version, right? It's yep. going to be a mind is bender. That, it's, uh, Juice, uh, Lawrence hasn't watched Akira. Can you give him a quick breakdown of why he should watch it? I mean, do you like post-apocalyptic? Well, all right, Juice, just... Before you go any further, just to, here's the thing. So Lawrence ain't an anime guy. And L, uh, I mean, Luke and I have been like trying to like ease him into the idea of watching some shit where like it's clear that our favorite influencers were influenced by this. But he ain't really having it right now. I feel so, that. I feel like feel off the strength of just for purposes uh, and just into other worlds. I feel like just that alone. Fuck everything else. Fuck Dragon Ball Z. Fuck One Piece. Fuck all that. Yeah. Just watch Akira, and then you don't even you don't even have to you don't even, you I'm when I would not I won't even DM you a manga. I won't even send you nothing. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. Yeah, we'll I, we'll I, pretty I, much leave you alone as far as that you know, anime goes. Just watch Akira. All right, just send it to me, and I'll you know I'll I'll try to take a look. I don't know I don't know what your vices are, but get your snacks, get your get your drinks, and just. Just watch Akira. Just watch Akira. Get your you, Scandinavian swimmers. L, you've been, you've listened to, been to, and liked things based on this movie. Okay. So yeah, Wait, he's, <laughs> he hates this right now. <laughs> no, I no, I, I'll I'll take a look. I mean, just like I said, just send me what I need to see, and then I'll go from there. He ain't never watching this shit. He's never watching it. <laughs> he ain't never gonna watch this. No, shit. no, no. Mission. Can I ask you guys a question? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go. I was I was looking. I was thinking about making the stock X purchase right the fuck now. Okay. Should I cop the cement fours for five forty four? That's no. That, after everything. No, dog. Come on. You better than that, man. No, the no, only reason why the only reason why I say that is because I I heard there was rumors of the cement fours coming out again. Cause God, I had twenty twelves, but the but I need those sixteens. I need that Nike Air. I want to buy some Kente cloth and like. Cause like do the right things one of my favorite movies ever being being from Brooklyn and like really loving Gina Carla um, Esposito as an actor <laughs> from Brooklyn, me, and just what he represented and just like the culture behind like, you know, Jordans Brooklyn all that I need those so it's like it's mad sentiment behind it but also as the sneaker enthusiast and just... You, you know what? Fuck it, Juice. Do it. Live your life, bro. I can't... Who am I to tell you how to how to eat, man? If you want if you want them shits bad, then fuck it. If you... You know what I mean? Do it. Yeah, fuck that phone bill. Yeah. Pop that. Exactly. Yo, they just went up $10. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about them. We're not even live right now. And, and they went up. Imagine when when this goes out, people are gonna be like, "Oh, juice is copping the fours. We gotta, we, we, we gotta, gotta buy it." Oh, the twenty twelves went up ten dollars. Why are the twenty twelves more? That's weird. Yeah, who knows yeah. about any of this shit? Um, it's, it's the cool. juice effect. What else? Do we have anything else? Hype the heat. I think that. I I want to make one more thing. Um, I just Reebok's doing another Harden question. Mm-hmm. 
I have a very bold prediction that somehow uh, James Harden is going to leave Adidas and become a Reebok basketball player. It's the, but they're under the same umbrella. So I like, know, I know, it's, but it's really- they are still two competing companies. When I worked, so I worked at Reebok while Adidas owned them, and, and they, they, they while we were while, while they so. Owned. Yo, yeah, but we were mad separate, bro. We were in the same building, but, like, the shit was still secretive and shit, whatever. Like, and then because Adidas was the parent company, they strong-armed Reebok and had given them John Wall. Mm. Hmm. I do feel like, based on what I've been seeing with Harden, Lovin, because this isn't the first time, not only the first question he got, but he's been wearing questions every once in a while on court. I didn't even notice that shit. Yeah, like, he, he I, wore, I like, uh... Did he what? Not all it? I forget when he did it, but he, but he wore a Lakers colorway. He's worn a couple different ones. And I feel like he just likes Reeboks better than Adidas. So my bold-ass prediction here is he's going to end up on Reebok somehow. Mm. But that's me. I don't think it's going to happen. I think I think if it does, it'll be when his contract expires with Adidas. But I feel like he's going to end up being a lifelong with Adidas. That's yeah. also true. Because, like... Like, I feel like, you know what? Oh, you know, it could also be a thing. I feel like, what if Paul George got dropped from Nike and they picked up Harden? What, I Nike? I, I don't see that happening, but. Yeah, I don't know I about don't that know. one. Just... I, I mean, Paul George is not, I don't know. Paul George, he's not playing like a dude with a shoe. And I feel like. That's true. Like, but his I'm, shoes are selling? I don't know. They like some of the best ball kicks right now. They fit weird. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't. I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't know. Harden. I feel like Harden wouldn't switch to Reebok. I feel like he would just continue to do shit with Reebok, like just because it's like everybody's under the same umbrella. Like he can. Le- I guess he can legally do that, and like he'll just have his own colorways of like old Reeboks and shit while still wearing his shoe because his shoe in the basketball realm has kind of put its own staple from what I see. Like when. Like just based on sneaker popularity and like, I got you. Um, kids and shit and just whatever. But I don't know. I don't see him leaving Adidas. We'll see. I kind of feel that way. I have no insider information, by the way. I know I worked there. I know I have friends there. I'm. This is just me talking out of my ass. So don't think I'm like trying to lead into something. But um, Ooh. <laughs> shut up, Luke. Um, so, you, you want to do your hypo seat right now? Yeah, we'll do a hypo seat. Uh, I picked. This week I picked the Air Trainer Three. Uh, yeah, bro. I haven't seen these in a while. I saw them pop up on my feed one day, and I was like, oh, I remember these. And they, I don't know. They just just give me classic. You know, they just give me classic vibes. I, I enjoy them a lot. I don't see them on people's feed enough. Solid, yeah. solid colorway, solid shoe. Uh, I don't think anyone's yeah. gonna cool. argue that. I was going to say, yeah, I'm actually looking at getting a pair of medicine balls because the, the medicine balls are very nice, but they're not I, yeah, available. Yeah, do the right thing. Those are the shoes he wore the whole movie. But yeah. Yeah. Ooh, medicine balls. Yeah, bro, medicine balls. I was looking at, at those. Uh, I would have put them as this one but for Hypeless Heat, but they don't have them available in stores, and at least you can still get pretty much – full-size run at Foot Locker still. For Air to Trainer piggyback Three. you, we have been talking in the store about uh, – the shifting in popularity. Watch, it's gonna go from dunks to trainers. A lot of me and me and my coworkers have been talking about that shit. Like, yo, get 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 wise on your trainers now, guys. Cause I, I can only imagine. Like I I Break think out the bows now. Yeah, I think trainers are next. I believe watch tra- and watch <laughs> Trap be the first. He'll play he'll throw some bows on and change the whole world. They're gonna be like, whoa, how do I get those? Who's Bo Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> yo, if anyone's wearing bows doesn't know who Bo Jackson is, I, that's Egregious. No, I don't. Uh, my hypeless heat um, this week is these uh, Diodoras, these meat baskets uh, used. They look like – now, I do have to contradict myself a little because I have gone on record saying I don't like when you buy a shoe and it looks like it's already been worn. I was going to challenge you on that. I admit to it. I admit. But it's, it's only this colorway that kind of looks like that, but I like how they kind of flipped a bunch of tags from – other sneakers so basically that front is an air force one that mm-hmm. heel tab that got going on is based on sand smith and it's like just weapon. clean i like it and i like I, again this is just a great alternative to not wearing a check yes there's a fire like oh like these a lot here's a good yeah. shoe they got other colorways i mean you can see they got mad colorways you know what i mean this shoe is like heat at every angle mm-hmm. i'd cop 
I want. Um, L, do you have one this week? Yeah, uh, s- since you guys put me on to those uh, Beyonce joints, let's do uh, <laughs> let's do the Alexander McQueens. I like those, man. Alexander McQueen. Yeah, these are good shoes. These are great alternative to a Stan Smith for sure. There you go. Juice, if you had to recommend one shoe that you feel like is a great shoe but it has no hype around it, what would you say not to try to put you on spot? Who you had him in hand. What do you got? Kalis OG. Josh Kalis' first uh, shoe with DC. Um, this is the collaboration with Butter Goods. So, like, it, um, Butter, Butter Goods is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're Australian. It's an Australian brand. And they collabed with DC and they did like a whole, they had like, they had like a whole, they had merch and shit. Merch was fire. But um, because of like what I was doing with DC uh, uh, past year, I got I got two pairs of these. They they sent me two pairs because I was like, nigga, I need these. These are literally my favorite skate shoe ever. Oh, right. My favorite colorway. The fucking the three M accents, like literally around, like it literally, it's three M all around. These shits are fucking gold to me. Yo. Yeah, those are gorgeous shoes. These shits are hard, and like once you really break them in, it's like and like the color palette is insane. Like the gum bottom. These things crack my skull, man. My fucking matha be. You should go. Just a dumb side question because I just thought of it right now. Do we consider sh- shit like these, like these collaborative uh, skate brand shoes for skaters, a triple label? Uh. What's a triple label? So it's like uh, when, um, like the Atmos, uh, uh, A6 Sean Wertherspoon shoe. Like that's okay. got three different entities. Like so, our skate shoes four skaters that are that get collabs triple labels well if we consider basketball shoes like if we consider like the harden reebok well no that's not a triple label i wouldn't think because uh, i don't know oh well, i guess not because i don't really consider like kobe's triple labels yeah you wouldn't consider like a kobe nike that's not a double label you know yeah no, you just Chris, you just making shit up at this. I don't think I don't think that's a triple. I don't th- I don't think it's I don't know. I don't think it's a triple label. I can be that could be a dumb question. I just it came to my head no, right it's now. Not a dumb, it's not a dumb question. I just don't think it's a I don't think it's a, a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb idiot. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. That's it, guys. Um any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Nope. Stop eating at McDonald's. <laughs> you stop eating at McDonald's. Um, I'll, I'll give you my review of the sandwich next week. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Um, all right, so you guys know the deal. Follow us on Instagram, uh, Sup Podcast at NYC, uh, at LZD325, at Trevises, at Not That Cheney. Juice, what's your Instagram? At Let Me Get a. L- oh, that's right. Yeah, L E M M E G E T U 4 H's. And uh, join the Discord, like we're talking about. Like, Discord's always popping. We got a nice little community in there. Um, we Juice got a sub right too. Juice is in, in there. there. <laughs> Most of the guests that have been on the podcast are also in the Discord. In the Discord, yeah. And and we're not even saying like just anybody. We like we got Juice works at Nike. We got fucking LV people in there. We got people from Huff. We got motherfuckers My all over Chris the place. Chris has a pyramid scheme. Oh yeah, Chris. Wow. Is, Yo, hits, shout out to shout out Chris Ra, man. <laughs> that dude. He has a whole dude. A literal army of people every Saturday, uh, every Saturday on sneakers for him. He doesn't have bots. He has humans. Literal human beings. <laughs> he gets like his whole family in one room and they're all like together on the phone or some shit. I don't understand it. It's fun. And he, and he is our plug. No one else's. No, yeah. I mean, you guys don't get him. We, it's our friend. None, none our friend. for you guys. <laughs> Yo, he's got like six computers in his bedroom. So he's like, all right, mom, sister, come on. All right, Thursday, come on. You know what time it is. Let's do this. And he's, I like he just, con- he just like constantly drops gems. He's just like, yeah, it's got 5,000 in the Robin Hood trying to play around. You know, got to take risks. So, oh, yeah. We were, he was talking fucking Tesla stock splits the week before it happened. It was like, what the fuck is this uh, guy on? He's a, he's a visionary. <laughs> he's doing things, man. <laughs> All right, so that's it, guys. That's it. Sub podcast. Uh, that's another one. Yep. There you right, go. So we'll see you guys there next you. week. All right. Thanks for coming. Shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let it go.